we're back. Okay, work on the old cam cover. Try to keep them scratching the surface up anymore than it already is. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is check our bushings out here and see how bad they look. How much metal's in the inside down here at the bottom where they rub. The only bearing there actually works. You can see I just have some kind of a mark in there. Overall they don't look too bad. Now you take your shaft, put in the hole and see how bad it really is. So you can see how much clearance you have in it. Quite a bit that way. A little bit this way. Overall, it's usable. So it's, it's a little loose, but it's usable. Let me check the cam. You go all the way against the stop, you pull it out just a little bit, and you check your clearance. So it's got a little clearance in it. Once again, it's, in, it's not tight, but it's not worn out. Okay, the last thing you do is you push it all the way down like that. You push down on the gear and you go back and forth like this in both directions. You can hear the clearance. Now we're not rocking it, we're just going up straight lateral. So you got clearance top to bottom. Side to side, not much. So if you can feel side to side clearance, that means you got two or three in there at least. When you're doing the wiggle wiggle like this, it's hard to tell. It could be out of round, it could be barrel shaped, but it'd be tight. It'll be tight when you do this test, loose this test. In this case here, it's loose a little bit up and down this way, which is the direction it has all the pressure. So if this is going like this, that can give you a little bit of tapping noise, sound like loose valves. That's where these noises come from. It's not just in the teeth like everybody says. Now if this is moving up and down, obviously the teeth are gonna get looser, but it's, it's all that makes noises. Okay. Customer already wants to put new stuff in here anyway. I already know that. But looks like somebody put a set screw in here. There's one also on the bottom of the case over here that I pulled out yet. There's one in here. I was gonna pull it out and check that oil gallery. Factory, there's a plug right in here. This is the plug's always been cut out and they put a set screw in it. That's the only way you can really clean that gallery up really good is to pull that plug out and check it that way. I blow on them a lot when I quit feeling grit or stuff. It's pretty clean. I usually leave it at that, but if you got an option to do it, we can go ahead and do it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put new bushings in here because that's what the customer wants. The cam definitely wouldn't hurt to be replaced. The other one, eh, it's 50-50. Okay, so we got some new bushings here. These are s, &S bushings here. Looks like they're using the same bushing inside and outside. And then this is our pinion bush, which is a gems bushing. Hopefully there's some material to hone to, or I mean a ream to. I can't hone these because these are bottomed blind holes. Otherwise I'd hone them. Okay, let's see what we got to do here. Pull this apart. Okay, this is my pre-69 cam bushing. This is 67, so that'd be pre. It's just one of those gem tools I modified. It came with this one, I don't use it. I use the one I made. Mine, I can use it for more than one thing. Like pulling these bushings out. This is made to pull out the primary bearing, electric start primary bearing. It is not made to pull out the cam bearings. I made it so it works on both. in there. And 
that should pull it out. Don't lose your little pin right there. So keep it from rotating. So the way that works is this collapse when it goes into bushing. This bar goes up the center. Here it expands it back out so now it can't collapse. And then it catches on the bushing and it can yank it out by pushing on the tube here. And you gotta make sure that you've got room for the bushing to go into the tube. If you don't have room for the bushing to go into the tube, it don't work. I had to make my own tool. All right, that one is out. So maybe Jim's will make that tool someday. They won't listen to me. I know that. This one right down here. This is a pinion bushing pulling tool. Gems again. Been modified obviously to make it work better. Common denominator around here, make it work. So it's been cut deeper to give it room. It's been notched over here for sports draw applications. And then it's also been cut thinner through here so it'll fit in the damn cam cover on a, on a generator motor. This is made for a cone motor. Once again, you make it work. <clears throat> Another tool Jim's doesn't make. And yes, they are weaker when you do that. But they seem to hold up. Same deal, it collapses when you go in. It doesn't want to go in that. Here, pops in there barely. Put your pin in there. See it right in there through the hole. All right, one bushing's out, pin's gone. Not sure where the pin went to. There it is. Yeah, and that's what happens when you shear them off. They break. And it's only another 150 bucks to fix it. Then you take it and cut it so it'll break again. <clears throat> oh well. Okay, there's the pin. Don't lose it. So we're gonna 
leave it right there so we don't lose that one. We got this other one over here we gotta get out of here. A pair of dikes works really good for doing that. You just push on the end of it with a dike and like that. It easy comes out pretty easily. Oop. There it is right there. Oop. Trying to lose it. Put it right over here where the other one is so you don't lose it. So now we're done with that bushing. Looks like it had a little bit of sleeve retainer Loctite on there. See the green residue? So those are junk. All right. Now you look at the hole and see how bad it is. Looks like somebody went after with a prick punch in there. You're tearing a piss up out of that cover. Now is the bushing loose and that's why they did that or is there something else going on? They had bad tools. What is the issues there? It's the problem when you pull this stuff apart, you never know what it is. Now they do make these bushings in five over, so if they're loose, you put the next size bushing. You have a problem. And if you're a prick, you get out your punch and you prick punch the piss out of it. <clears throat> It should be good to go. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely got a lot of, a lot of something going on up in there. That hole feels all right. <coughs> all right, so let's pull out our bush and see what we got to deal with here. Looks like the same bushing that was in there already. When you put these in, you got to make sure you put this groove right here where that oil groove goes, so the oil will get to the into the bushing. That's if you want to have an end oiler. That's where the oil goes down to the center of the shaft. Uh, this shaft here, if you look at it, is plugged. It only oils to the side here. Side oiler. So when you let's go where on that tip. I think I'm gonna go hone this shaft a little bit. That's a lot of metal went through that thing or something. Clean that up a little bit. <clears throat> I didn't see that earlier. Now when you have a side oiler, instead of using the end oiler groove, you go over here to the side oiler hole and you line that hole up right with the other one. And you put it in there, you line up with that hole and it's oil pressure. Now, if you want to use this end oiler one over here, when you do that, you have a couple things that happen. One is you have very low oil pressure because now you're completely lubricating the end of the crank the whole time and these early pumps don't regulate oil with a squat. So you wind up having basically zero oil to your top end. The next problem is, is that hole right there is purposely in there to keep any oil that gets on the back side to get it out of it. So that just puts a direct oil line there, there and it just blows right out here. So if you're going to make it into oil you have to plug this hole up. But if you do do that, you'll probably have no oil pressure top in and very low oil pressure overall. Okay, now this bushing here is going in there partially on its own. That's not a good sign. This is a prime candidate for a two-over bushing that they don't make. It's one more thing that you should make that they don't make. Okay, so we're definitely going to have to put sleeve retainer Loctite on that. And definitely have to have a pin. Now I can reuse the pinning groove there which I will. All right, now the other one, over here, yes and yes. I need one of these. Now, where's the cam mount? Right here. Typical s, &S they have a, a humongous amount of material that you gotta remove, which makes it very hard to do anything. Probably you reamed at it, it reams what it wants to and it kicks the center off a little bit and easily makes your cams not work very well. A little bit too much. So they haven't changed how they do things. Now if you have tooling where you can bore it on center, that's, that's bitching, but the problem is when you're replacing stuff, who has that stuff? Even I don't do that. So this is 801 on the ID. 
and the OD on this is 811, so that's 10 thousandths. Three small would be ideal. Jim gives you like one. 10 thou is so much that it's going to cause issues. So, what do we do about that? Don't know. Go find the gems that's made right. That's the first thing. That's an essay in helping us. So I'm going to go see if I can find me a gems one. If that don't work, we'll do something else. Okay, the next problem is, is, is this thing loose in here? Yeah, about the same as the other one. It kind of goes in a little bit and stops. Right where the big peen mark is. Yeah. I think it'll be alright with Loctite on it and pinned. Now they do put the big hole in there, which is nice, so that's a plus. Okay, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do about the bushing there. I'm going to go hunt that down. <coughs> Worst case, I'm going to uh, ream it out a little bit bigger. We'll see. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I don't think I can ream it. Probably have to bore it. It'll take an hour to do that. It's a lot of work. Okay, so that's what we're going to figure out. Alright, so I need a bushing that is not theirs. Let's go over and see what we got in bushings. I might have been out of bushings when I grabbed all the stuff for this job. Since then I've probably reordered. I see a Jim's bushing sitting right here that looks vaguely like I want to use it. Uh, bushing cam, big twin. I think that's going to be the, the winner right there. This is a standard OD. Perfect. Let's go try that out. Now S and S is about a third the cost of what these cost. I think that bag of two is still cheaper than this one or this one. By quite a bit. But these here will probably work better. So you get what you pay for, basically. I'm going to cut myself. And go that direction. Oh, this is the inner one. See, it's got the notch in there. Damn it. That's why I didn't use these. Ah, I knew there was a reason. Well, while we're in here, let's see what the bore is. Seventeen, eight, ten. Something's off. There we go. See, I said they don't leave you much to hone. When it goes on there already, there ain't nothing to hone. At least it's fairly tight though. So what did I measure before? It was way off. Oh, I'm just measuring the inside. 17. Something's way the hell off. See, I know these are worn on this caliper quite a bit, but geez, that's way different. Cam's 11 or 12, and it goes in real nice tight on the bush, and the bush is at 17. It's got some clearance, but ain't that loose. All right. I see when your tools get worn out, they get worn out. That's why these aren't by the machine shop anymore. It still work good on the other part. Okay, that's the wrong bushing, so let's go see if I got the correct bushing. All right. 
cam bushing. No grooves in it. That would be the correct one. That's a pinion bushing. Gear shaft cam cover. Well, that's a goofy name. You would never think that's a pinion bushing by that name. That's a pinion bushing for an early motor. We don't have that. Early is 53 and earlier. Well, I'm striking out today, and I. All right, I don't like that bushing either. I'm guessing that's why this stuff is sitting here like this, because it's not right. Gear bushing cam cover standard. Gear shaft. Doesn't work. Okay, I got this genuine Harley one here. Didn't particularly use that one. Okay, so we ever use this one here that's wrong. Which I don't really want to use. Use the SNS one that don't fit. Once again, not really what I want to use. Or I can use that genuine Harley one over there. That big dollar one. Of course the price of gym stuff these days is more than Harley used to be. All right. The problem with this is the damn. It's not much bushing diameter to it. Yep, and the S and S is though. Okay. Harley it is. Did they give us anything to work with? Better than gems. Basically about zero. Okay, we're gonna use the Harley bushing. I'm gonna use all this other crap we got here. Looks like I need to find some uh, gems out or cam bushings. <coughs> Bet you the Peter says I have some. But I don't. Let's we'll fix that problem. Okay, so we're swapping over the Harley from SNS. Better parts. Good luck on getting one of those from Harley anymore. That one was made in 95. That's when that bushing was made. My last one. I think I was saving that for somebody important like me. Oh well. I'll use the SMS one on my bike. I'll spend the time on my bike making it work. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put these things in. Pretend like we know what we're doing. We need to mark this here. We already got two notches in here. The problem is when you put these down in there, you can never duplicate those holes. So you want to put new holes in there each time you put one of these in there. So this has been redone twice, for sure. And we're going to put another one in there. So we have to mark it where it goes. Now for the Loctite the seat, we're going to have to get some brake clean on here to clean these holes up. Break clean. We can handle that. Uh, let's see. What are we gonna do here? It's gonna be fun to do. Basically, should we get douching? Might use a little bit too much. Just a little. Okay, those are all clean. Okay, Harley did not put their hole in there, so we got to put a hole in this for the oil hole. 
That'd be that one right there. <clears throat> Is it there uh, 200 or 300 in? I forget. I think there's three. And let's see. Yep. 300,000 is in there. Probably can't read it. Okay, so 300,000 in here, we need to put a hole. So let's go do that right now, because that has to be done. That has to be done before the cover goes in. Ooh. Good job. I don't know why that got left way up near like that. That's dangerous. Okay. Josh Edward over here. I somebody was working on something important over here yesterday. There's my hammer. Allen's. Good thing I don't need any of this stuff, right? Put that up there, get out of the way. Okay. <clears throat> So what I do is I hold it in a vise here, like that. Find my center punch. You measure it 300 thou over, about there. Give it a light tap. Double check your 300, looks good. Put a little bigger tap in it. Now if you hit it too hard, you can break the bush. So don't do that. That could possibly be a bad thing to do. Okay, we dig out our center drill. And go ahead and drill that thing all the way through. Now you wanna make sure you got that on center top of the point there. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to do some drilling. It appears that my uh, drill press is being occupied. I'll have to go use the other one over here. That's why you have more than one. <coughs> it appears this one's occupied too. It's being used as a workbench. More of a storage area to me. Work around that problem. Perfect. All right, these things are in my way again. Oh, I keep moving these out of my way. Let's see if I get them more out of my way. These are next week's project. Maybe I'll do them on Christmas Day. You gotta give me something important to do. Okay. Run this thing on down here. that one. Now we go to the bigger one. We'll go to a number four center drill. It has a bigger hole in the center. It's not that much bigger though. We can go real big too if we want. Go 
a number five cylinder. See the difference? So we use a small one. This is we use a three to drill it. Now this is a four. This is a five. Now each one has a little bit bigger hole to let oil on top of the cam. So the higher the RPM motor you have, the bigger the hole you better put in it. If you notice that S and S push has like a quarter inch hole in it. Harley only has a, about an eighth inch hole in their stuff. Which is probably this one. We're gonna use this one. In between. That's about a 3 sixteenths hole now. Measure it. Yep, 3 sixteenths. Big asshole. Now if you also notice I use a center drill to put a chamfer on it. So it's a little bit bigger yet. So if you miss it a little bit, it'll still get oil in it. Now there's a little bit of a burr up on the top of your edge. You want to knock that down a little bit with a fine file. That'd be one that doesn't cut very well. Okay, so you don't want to make the bushing any smaller, you just want to knock off the little sharp edge that sticks up. That way when you push it in, it won't gall up the bushing hole. Cause issues. Not that we've ever done that before. Okay, we're going to take my hammer back. Because I like my hammer. Uh, the rest of this crap we'll leave over here, we don't need it. At least not today. Maybe tomorrow. All right. I got my hammer back. Feel better now. Okay, now this is ready for Loctite. An insulation device. These going about an eighth of an inch recessed in. This is pre-made to do that. Goes like that. This is a Jim's tool. It's not made to do what I'm using it for. Once again, I made my own tool. And don't tell them about all these special tools. You get paid if you do. Okay, so we need some slave retainer. That's the good stuff. Need some bushings, slave retainer, bushing. That should give us what we need. We can push for that. I'll stop by and pick up another mandrel on the way over there. We'll bring the towel with us too. All right, we got all kinds of stuff with us today. Oh, I got a can of brake cleaner we don't need over here. And I'll grab that too in my extra hand. Uh, let's see, I got to stop over here for a pit stop. Let's pick up something down here. And let's grab one of these here. I like this one today. We'll use this one. Yeah, I don't like that one. I want this one here. This one's better. Yeah, it's prettier. Alright. I'm really getting a load of crap to carry. Look at all this junk. There we go. Did anybody get motion sickness yet? Alright. Tools, tool, another tool, two bushings. A towel, pressing block, towel, and one cover. Boom. Now, if we're lucky, this will all push in pretty easily. We'll see how that flies. It doesn't always work that way. Okay, lock them tight. A little bit on your finger. It goes in the hole. Stay out of the oil galleries. Definitely stick it where they had all that peening going on in there. Put a little extra in that. Try to fill those holes in a little bit. All right. Make sure you line up your hole with the hole on the cover. 
close enough. Put that right there. The cover's going sideways, pushing. It usually does have issues. material over there. Try it again. Okay, make sure it's all the way flush against the cover there or the flange. This appears to be in there good. I can see through the hole right through the bushing there. Whoop. Let me get there we can see in there. See right through where my finger's at, so that's a good sign. That means we hit the right spot. Alright, that one's done. Okay, now we gotta do this other one over here. That one flat. Now this one here, it's gonna wanna be it's gonna want the extra material on this side. Probably more than just a little bit too, I bet. Okay. A little Loctite on there. Stay out of the hole. Oh, I forgot to mark where the bush the holes were at. Oops. Oh well. <laughs> Have to go by memory. Or I can play a tape back. Okay, you got to make sure this bush, these hole lines up with the hole over here for the oil gallery. If you want any oil, you better line that up. It is kind of important. Okay, use our press tool. Pressing adequately. Pressing sideways. And with sleeve retainer Loctite, you don't have much option there. I'm pressing sideways too many times. That stuff bites in pretty hard. Shot at this, and we got it. Not too bad on the air. Okay, now it's pushed in there all the way in. Make sure that looks like it's all the way down flush. Oop, get where you can see it, maybe. Hard to tell if it's all the way in there or not. A little more build up on that corner. Push out some more. That's all you can do. And looks. Looks like there's a gap all the way around the whole thing. Looks evenly gapped all the way around. It must be hitting inside the fillet on this thing. All right, well, either way, it's in there. So we go over and blow some air through it, make sure air goes through it. If it blows through, we're good. If it doesn't, we're screwed. Okay, next thing. Back over this direction. We do a lot of walking around this place. Back over here. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, the, oh, the crap. 
crappy film work around here. Video work. Okay. So now we need to drill a hole in this. And my vertical mill over there I always use is occupied right now. I might have to unoccupy it. And then you gotta pin this one in there also. See I had my pin out and everything to mark it. I didn't do it. Okay now I know there's a mark over here someplace. I'm gonna guess it's about right there. I know there was one over here someplace on this corner. We're gonna call it over here right there. So anywhere between here and here, I can put a, a dowel, or I can go up here and put one up in one of these corners up in here. Now a good spot to do it is where it's really strong is all through here, because there's a gallery that goes in through here that's not there. It's solid. So that's a half inch thick right there. So anywhere you put a dowel in this area right in here is a good spot. So I'm going to put one right in that spot right there. Now this cover is nice and thick through here, but not all of them are that way. I've had them when they're pretty thin and you put the hole in there and they like to crack through the whole cover. That would be a problem. Okay, so now we need to get our drill bit. We need to install our little dowel pins here, right here, that we have not lost yet. Okay, take this for a show on the road again. We're going this way. All right, I need to use my milling machine. We need to move it. We have something in our way right now over here. It's called a Walker project. We're not supposed to say what it is, but you can figure it out yourself, I'm sure. Basically, he's learning how to break stuff on the mill. There we go. That ought to be far enough for me to use. cover and put my prick punch hole in there actually it's not a prick punch it's a this one's a center punch the difference between a prick punch and a center punch is the angle of the tip that's the difference in case you didn't know okay so right in the center of that bush right there two wax So I'm going to punch that sucker right there. Then we're going to drill this one right down the same spot here because we have a uh, drill area, so it'll, it'll cut every time the same. You can't do that up here because you have to drill through a flange. If the flange wasn't there and the hole was there, you could drill straight down, but with the flange there, you can't do that. There's no way to guarantee you're going to hit it. And if you make the bushing hole instead of round, you make it oval, the pin will fall out, so it doesn't do anything. Minor problems. Okay, I need a drill. We're going to find a drill. We need a 120 drill, size, not number. Uh, 120 is somewhere in here. Let's see, 120 is right there. That's a number 31 drill. 
Got a nice gold one right there. It's a 120. Now, has that ever been sharpened before? No. It looks like it's original sharpening, which is what we want. When you resharpen it, the center goes slightly off center. The drill will drill slightly off center on one side, so it'll be an orbital deal instead of a center on center spin. It'll make the hole bigger. It won't drill the size. If the hole is not on size, it'll pin will fall out. So a lot of those things that happen. In. Uh, easy way to find out what a quarter inch is. It's actually pretty easy. Grab a quarter inch drill. Stick it in there. Yeah, it's about a quarter inch. That'll be about right. Okay, now this is going to be hard to do because we're on top of a towel. <laughs> See it pushes on it, changes on you. So I gotta hold this side because it wants to go that way. And we'll drill it. We'll speed up to over a thousand. And it's already drilled off center. It walked over on me. All right, so I'm going to fold that towel up a little bit. Come back over here and try to get it to drill closer to me. Yep. I screwed that up. I just drilled that off the whole thing. All right, well, we're not going to be drilling a hole right there. That's out. That didn't work. I haven't done that one before. Oh well. That's what happens when you, you work on too much cushioning material. And you don't peen the piss out of it, put a good peen in it. And you're also working on a bunch of crap on your machine. Got a peen in there now. Get my surface better. Less cushioning is always an improvement. All right, set that. Reset my quarter inch. Yeah, we're way above that. Again, all right, yeah, it was a much better job. Problem with that is I'm so close to the edge of the bushing and that's not very good either. That was a lousy job. Good thing I videotape how not to do it. Don't do it that way. Well, at least I didn't drill through the edge of the bushing. If I did, I'd have a problem. I'd probably have to replace the bushing. Okay, I want to check my depth to see where I'm at. Here's our pin. Looks like it'll be just right. So we should be good. 
Oh, I just lost that too. It's a good thing I didn't go for. Cover. Whack it in there. Make sure it's below the surface slightly. There we go. So we're slightly below the surface. Now I like to paint it with a bigger punch and mush the bushing on top of it. So the pin can't come out. Like that. It's held in there. Now the bushing the the bushing you're gonna push out where the pin is, so you have a little bit of a high spot right through here when you go to put the cam in there. You can also see how it's all de pushed over the that way anyway. Alright, so that was that one. Now this one here's a little easier because the hole's already in here. Just gotta set the depth and do it. So you kind of eyeball where you want it. Get your drill bit here to set the depth up here again. Keep going lower each time we do this. Pretty loose. Stop again. Right there. Okay, so you got the hole in there a little bit. Get your other pin out. That hopefully you didn't lose. Now you can put Loctite on these two if you want. If they go in tight, you don't need it, but you know. If in doubt, you can always Loctite them. There we go. Go ahead and paint it a little bit oh, out of view. Slightly below the surface. This one's too big to paint now. Use this punch here to paint it the same one. Put it in there with. Put the paint on top of it. So you can see the little paint right on top. Pretty good. All right, those are in there. All right, pull out your drill. And that's how you do that. Now you get to put all your parts back away over here that we got out. That was a 31 drill. Put your parts away when you're done with them, you don't lose them. That always helps. Okay, I'm going to grab all our tools here. Back over here again. We'll be back over there in a minute. We're just going back and forth. All right. Now, let's see how close our cam fits. Remember, we didn't have much really compression on that to hold anything. So let's see if we can get this cam to go in here. This cam has very low chamfer to it, so it's not going to help us any. So we 
I try to use the cam to get the bush to go back where it needs to go to. In this case, it's not going to let us do what we want to do. It's mushed over so far, I can't get to go in. I think I have the old cam. Yep. Not going to happen. See the high spot right there where it's pushing on it? Keeping me from putting the cam in the hole. I always like getting the cams to go in there a little bit and burnt and compressed. It basically presses the uh, brass bushing back into the pin to make sure it's really good and tight. It'll also expand the whole bushing to make it tighter in the cover before you ream it all out. So this thing should have been close enough, it should be going in there, but it's not letting me do it. Trying to right there. There we go. Got it to go in there a little bit. I'm going too far, you'll never get it out. Moved up the end of the cam too. All right, so you can see how tight that press part was right there in the bushing. It was really leaving a good mark on that. It's also tight on there, everything else too. Appears to be loose down here though, see so there's no contact right over this corner. That's because everything's being pushed upwards. So it looks like there's a high spot here, high spot here, and high spot there. So it's hitting on three spots. One, two, three. So that means these are all loose areas. That means the bushing's not round. See, that's what I'm trying to do by beating it into there. It's switching it all out. Remember, this bushing was all peened. I think it was peened over on this side here where it's all low right now, too, which is always wonderful. Try peening it in a little bit further. Put a little oil on it. it keeps it from galling up. Just put some oil in there. See, it doesn't even want to go back in the hole. It's so tight. There it goes. Almost all the way in now. Those new teeth on the deer are sharp. Trying to cut me. Okay. I'm getting in there. It's burnishing it in there pretty good. I'll try it one more time. Went all the way down that time.
Give it a light knock there. Yeah, two tar sharp. That was a little extra work there, but I'm happy. <sighs> see, if you don't have to take the, if you're not cutting material away and the cam goes in a hole, that means it went bigger. Things got pressed in more. All those gaps are getting filled in. So now it's all in there. So now we can go ahead and ream it. It should be pretty good. It almost goes in there now like that. Oh, there it goes. All right.